SpongeBob's darkest episode. This is the last part of the trilogy. Let's check this out. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace when it comes again. To websites, online stores, etc. There's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. After three videos and probably a bunch of mentions, I can safely say Spongebob has not only been a big part of this channel, but my life as well. I think it's a really creative show and it never missed the mark, but there's one episode in particular that I think about maybe once a week. That episode is Squidville. Now when I caught Squidville at a young age, my reaction was always Squidward's sad, and that still holds till this day. I think Squidville, in a very creative way- Fair. Oh, this is the one where uh, he just repeats his life over and over again. Yeah, this is a really, really dark and aware moment right here not only depression but existentialism as well let's run through it the episode starts with spongebob and patrick playing with reef blowers what starts as a fun way to pass time quickly turns into something more than that something that annoys squidward they take the lines out of spongebob's house the nose mouth and eventually eyes out of squidward's they turned what used to be a face a personality a soul into nothing more than a rock trapping squid in this place of nothingness after digging himself out from underground he confronts spongebob and patrick criticizing them for using the reef blowers and basically wishing he didn't have to live with them in this attitude of course shortly after a tv comes out of the sky and grants squidward an opportunity to escape to a land called squidville where he is surrounded by only those of his kind unsurprisingly he decides to take the trip after passing a pretty simple Honestly, test on his physical i forgot that's how that uh that episode started <laughs> i was so confused while watching that appearance he's welcomed with the same negative energy he's had his whole life by another civilian and as a result he feels amazing now the following montage is where things get interesting Squidward goes about some of his favorite activities like biking, buying canned bread, interpretive dance, and clarinet playing. In simpler terms, it's Squidward in his ideal society. There isn't room for error. But as this life continues, Squidward finds himself numb to these pleasures. After doing them every day, they start to mean less to him. Eventually, he grows depressed, and I think this is where the show gets really interesting. In less than a minute, the writers are able to capture a depressing part of life that everyone has to deal with. We as people similar to Squidward have this desire for pleasure slash love or happiness, but this episode argues happiness can exist on its own. By that I mean even if Squidward eliminates everything that brings him anger and sadness, that feeling of dread is inevitable, which in my opinion applies to all of us. What is happiness Jeez, if not man. a direct response to sadness? This That's episode isn't just stating right the fact that Squidward is sad, it's exploring a definition for happiness and satisfaction in general, especially to someone dealing with depression. It criticizes this ideology that bringing yourself satisfaction is surrounding yourself in a setting fit just for you. I think we've all been in that place where we say, if only blank was blank, then everything would be fine. But life is an endless search for that next I know, thing. I've definitely said that recognizes. sometimes. Even with these qualities, Squidward is still sad, so in a sense he's trapped and can never find that full happiness. But that's not on him, it still applies to everyone, us included. Much of this can be supported by looking at the ancient hedonists, very different from modern hedonists, who look at happiness not as a state of being, but as something made up of decisions we make. They find happiness in smaller moments, the way, say, Spongebob and Patrick do. It's a way of thinking that Spongebob clearly lives by. Even at something as debatably suffering as work, he finds moments of relief and enjoyment in pretty much every episode. Squidward, who clearly strives for a state of happiness, is only brought down further into his state of depression because he relies on his shortcomings and life around him as the excuse for not being happy, but in reality, he's always searching for a constant state of happiness that is unattainable. Let's think hypothetically. Say you hate your job, you have bad allergies, you want a partner, and I don't know, it's too cold where you live. So maybe you <laughs> magically lose your allergies. You no, a mine is it's too hot where you live, but the other ones are pretty job close. Storyboard <laughs> artist because God damn, the allergies. Like gig. You have literally everything. So do you just never feel sad anymore? Most likely, you're still going to find error in your everyday life. There's going to be something holding you back from being 100% happy. Sitting on the couch watching a movie gave you pleasure because of the events leading up to it. Because that activity in itself isn't an act of relief. It only feels like a relief when put in the context of, say, sadness. This is a good time to cite the Wheel of Fortune. No, not the popular game show hosted by Pat Sajak. <laughs> I'm talking about a concept in ancient philosophy that means the unpredictable nature of fate. In this scenario, it's safe to assume happy happiness is attached to this wheel. Boethius, a philosopher from the 6th century, argues that the wheel continues to spin, and that while we may feel the fortune of happiness, it isn't true happiness, because if happiness is attached to the wheel, our sadness is as well. True happiness is found in eternal ideas, like finding God, attaching ourselves to higher knowledge, that's different than the feeling of being happy that you can get from being with a loved one, or say, indulging in pleasures you'd find in Squidville. So not much later in this episode, Squidward accepts this depression, finding himself alone in the park. He is then given another opportunity when a reef blower is found unattended. After some hesitation, Squidward <laughs> takes the reef blower and begins to play with it, using it against. Look how happy he got when he pressed that leaf blower. Around him, all for his own pleasure. How this ties into earlier is that this society is essentially a mirror of who he is. This is the show's way of showing Squidward battling against himself. The pleasure and genuine, fresh happiness that he feels in the moment is nothing but a reaction to his own actions. 
It's a feeling that only exists because of the bad. Now notice how I said feeling rather than a way of being. Squidward is aware of the harsh consequences that come from these actions, like being kicked out of the town. But in one of the few times in this entire series, Squidward thinks short term on what makes him happy. Rather than striving to reach a state of constant happiness, he appreciates the happy moments that he can get. But is this really a happy ending? I'd argue it's not. I can imagine it being impossible for Squidward to find joy and excitement out of most things after this. I mean, how would it feel to know anything good in your life that brings you happiness will eventually feel numb and bring you sadness? How depressing is it to feel unenthused about the only things that brought you joy and the only way to find happiness is to disrupt things? And the funny thing is, it's not like Squid is alone. This is all of us. We're all Squidward in a certain sense if put into this hypothetical situation. Squidville is one of my favorite episodes of TV out there. It's impressive how much it does in only 12 minutes. Especially with the way the world currently is, I think it's moments like these that remind you of some of the simpler ways of finding happiness in life. Like, say, watching a YouTube video on Squidville or playing with a reef blower. It's all Play with a leaf blower, Just boys. Do it. Is a great it's show. fun. Achieving a constant state of happiness and fulfillment is unachievable. And what was the last thing? Oh, yeah, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Oh, you're nice. probably self-isolating <laughs> right now. And if you're not, you, oh, you should. And if you're... I think that's it. But huge. Damn, yeah, that one of the that episode is one of my favorite episodes to go back to a lot. Just because, like, I don't know, it's kind of dark, but kind of eye-opening that, like, <laughs> don't take shit so seriously, you know? Play with the leaf blower once in a while, you know? Go for it. Not everything has to be so... Yeah. You know what I'm saying.